the Oppenheimers are instantly recognized for their wealth and influence. In the 1940s, the family patriarch, Harry Oppenheimer, oversaw the growth of the Anglo-American Mining Corporation. His son, Nicholas, continued the family's business legacy, expanding the company's reach across the continent. The Oppenheimers were also known for their philanthropy, supporting education and conservation efforts in South Africa. Their name became synonymous with the country's industrial and economic development during the 20th century. Their reign has managed to not only survive, but thrive through the most testing of historical eras, amassing billions through two world wars, the digital revolution of the 21st century, and even escaping the highly publicized blood diamond controversy of the early 2000s. Their family's epic saga is inextricably intertwined with the gleaming allure of diamonds, the strategic maneuverings of high finance, and diversification into the most essential goods, including Africa's very food supply. At the helm of this legendary lineage, as of 2024, is Nicholas F.F. F. Oppenheimer, affectionately known as Nicky to those in his inner circle. With a staggering personal net worth of $9.85 billion, Nicky is the 223rd richest person on Earth, according to Bloomberg's influential Billionaires Index. This marks a notable climb of almost $2 billion from his $7.95 billion net worth just two years prior in 2022. The dramatic ascent of Nicky's immense fortune can be traced back to a pivotal moment in 2012 when he oversaw the sale of his family's 40% controlling stake in the famed De Beers Diamond Company to the Anglo-American Corporation. That divestment alone netted the Oppenheimers a hefty sum of $5.2 billion, further cementing their status as one of the wealthiest families on the planet. But the Oppenheimer family's wealth and influence extends far beyond the sparkling allure of diamonds. Over generations, they have strategically diversified their business interests, making savvy investments that have expanded their reach across a multitude of industries. From mining and finance to agriculture and real estate, the Oppenheimer name has become synonymous with the industrial and economic development of not just South Africa, but the entire African continent. Their sprawling business empire includes controlling stakes in some of the region's most essential commodities, from the food on people's tables to the raw materials powering homes and industry. This wide-ranging portfolio has allowed the family to amass staggering wealth, even as they've weathered periods of political and economic turmoil in South Africa. Yet the Oppenheimers are not merely titans of industry and commerce. They are also known for their substantial philanthropic efforts, channeling their immense resources to support education, conservation, and community development initiatives across Africa. This careful balancing of business acumen and civic responsibility has cemented the family's legacy as one of the most influential dynasties not just in South Africa, but on the global stage. As Nicky Oppenheimer navigates the complex challenges of the 21st century, the weight of his family's storied past looms large. But with his keen business instincts and a steadfast commitment to using wealth to enact positive change, he seems poised to carry the Oppenheimer name to even greater heights in the decades to come. This masterstroke, supplemented by about $390 million in dividends, laid the cornerstone of Nicky Oppenheimer's diverse portfolio, one with a keen eye on commodities and African markets. Nicky's ventures span continents, with private equity investments in Africa, Asia, the U.S., and Europe, managed through Stockdale Street in London and Tana Africa Capital in Johannesburg. These strategic investments have yielded lucrative returns, cementing his status as a titan in the realm of global business. Beyond the boardroom, Nikki's interests soar into the skies with Fireblade Aviation, a Johannesburg-based private aviation firm offering executive charter flights and VIP service, catering to an elite clientele. Additionally, in the healthcare sector, Nikki holds a significant 3.37% stake in Integrated Diagnostics Holdings, expanding his influence into consumer healthcare across several countries. Yet, Nikki's passion extends to environmental stewardship as well. He owns the Shangani Ranch, a vast 65,000 hectare property celebrated for its conservation efforts, and co-owns the Tuli Kalahari, South Africa's largest private game reserve, with his son and heir apparent, Jonathan Oppenheimer. The baton of the Oppenheimer legacy is soon poised to pass to the aforementioned Jonathan Oppenheimer, Nikki's son. 
having first honed his skills at N.M. Rothschild & Sons and Anglo-American Corporation, as well as his family's historical flagship company, De Beers. Jonathan's prowess in commercial endeavors is undeniable. His tenure as managing director of De Beers Consolidated Mines in South Africa underscored his business acumen, and in 2023, he made a strategic move by taking control of Nigeria's GZ Industries Limited, signaling his ambition to shape the beverage can industry in sub-Saharan Africa. Furthermore, Rebecca Oppenheimer, arguably the family's big brain, adds another dimension to the Oppenheimer saga. Raised in Manhattan's Upper West Side and a graduate of Columbia University and Caltech, Rebecca's contributions to astrophysics are well known. She has co-discovered the first brown dwarf and pioneered the study of exoplanetary atmospheres, earning numerous accolades in the scientific community. Rebecca even owns a palatial 8,462-square-foot residence in Washington State, designed to resemble a UFO, exemplifying the family's display of wealth. The story of the Oppenheimer family's rise to power and wealth can be traced back to the late 19th century, when the first patriarch, Ernest Oppenheimer, emerged into the world on May 22, 1880, in Friedberg, German Empire. Born into a Jewish family, Ernest's early life was steeped in the cultural and economic milieu of his time, as Jewish families like the Oppenheimers contributed significantly to the local economy. At the age of 17, Ernest embarked on his professional journey, joining Dunkel Spooler Company, a London-based diamond brokerage. His astute understanding of the diamond trade and unerring eye for detail did not go unnoticed, and at the age of 22, he was dispatched to South Africa to act as a buyer for his company in the city of Kimberley. Kimberley, at the time, was a burgeoning economic hub in South Africa, with advanced infrastructure and modernity, including the establishment of the first stock exchange in Africa in 1881. Ernest Oppenheimer deftly maneuvered his way into the city's corridors of influence, engaging in its political sphere with the same acumen he applied to business. In fact, he even became the mayor of Kimberley from 1912 to 1915, showcasing the Oppenheimer family's penchant for strategic foresight and political intrigue from the very beginning of their dominance of Africa's resource markets. The Oppenheimer family's remarkable rise to global prominence is inextricably linked to their strategic foray into the sparkling realm of African diamonds. It all began in 1917, when Harry Oppenheimer, in partnership with the American engineer William Lincoln Honnold, launched the Anglo-American Corporation, a bold venture that would soon become a cornerstone in the international diamond trade. The Anglo-American Corporation's pivotal move in 1919 to purchase diamond mines in Southwest Africa was a direct challenge to the long-standing De Beers Diamond Monopoly a company that had maintained an unshakable grip on the global diamond market for decades. This strategic acquisition, backed by investments from the United States, England, and South Africa, laid the essential groundwork for the Oppenheimer family's ascent to dominance in the diamond industry. Over the ensuing years, the family's influence continued to grow. In 1924, Ernest Oppenheimer, Harry's son, secured a seat in the South African House of Assembly, further cementing the clan's political clout. Three years later, Ernest assumed the prestigious chairmanship of De Beers, allowing him to fully execute his ambitious strategy, establish market monopolies, control diamond pricing and supply channels, and create an artificial scarcity to keep prices soaring. This ruthless yet savvy maneuvering transformed the Oppenheimer family into the undisputed kings of the diamond world. Their stranglehold on the industry allowed them to wield immense economic and political power, not just in South Africa, but on the world stage. However, the outbreak of World War II presented new challenges and opportunities for the Oppenheimer dynasty. Amidst the global conflict, accusations surfaced against Ernest Oppenheimer for allegedly withholding essential industrial diamonds that were crucial for the United States war effort. Yet, despite these allegations, the family's strategic foresight had already positioned them to weather the storm. In a bold move, Ernest Oppenheimer had overseen the establishment of diamond-cutting factories in South Africa, ensuring a steady supply of precious gems even as Europe was engulfed in war. This strategic diversification beyond mere mining and trading allowed the Oppenheimers to maintain their dominance, 
while also positioning them to capitalize on the post-war diamond boom. As the 20th century progressed, the Oppenheimer family's business interests continued to expand beyond the confines of the diamond trade. They strategically diversified their portfolio, making savvy investments that allowed them to amass staggering wealth across a multitude of industries, from mining and finance to agriculture and real estate. At the heart of this sprawling business empire stood the family's crown jewel, the De Beers conglomerate. By the 1980s, De Beers controlled approximately 90% of the global rough diamond supply, cementing the Oppenheimer's status as the undisputed titans of the industry. Yet, the family's influence extended far beyond the sparkling allure of diamonds. Their expansive business interests gave them a controlling stake in some of the region's most essential commodities, from the very food on people's tables to the raw materials powering homes and industry across Africa. This wide-ranging portfolio has allowed the Oppenheimer clan to weather periods of political and economic turmoil in South Africa, amassing staggering wealth even as the country navigated the complexities of the post-apartheid era. But the Oppenheimers are not merely ruthless industrialists and financiers. They are also known for their substantial philanthropic efforts, channeling their immense resources to support education, conservation, and community development initiatives across the African continent. This careful balancing of business acumen and civic responsibility has cemented the family's legacy as one of the most influential and respected dynasties not just in South Africa, but on the global stage. As the 21st century dawned, the Oppenheimer patriarch, Harry Oppenheimer's great-grandson, Nicholas Nicky Oppenheimer, assumed the mantle of leadership. With a staggering personal net worth of $9.85 billion as of 2024, Nicky is the 223rd richest person on earth, according to Bloomberg's Billionaires Index. Nicky's dramatic rise in wealth can be traced back to a pivotal moment in 2012 when he oversaw the sale of his family's 40% controlling stake in De Beers to the Anglo-American Corporation for a hefty sum of $5.2 billion. This strategic divestment further cemented the Oppenheimer name as one of the most powerful and influential in global finance and industry. Yet, as Nicky navigates the complex challenges of the 21st century, the weight of his family's storied past looms large. With his keen business instincts and a steadfast commitment to using wealth to enact positive change, he seems poised to carry the Oppenheimer name to even greater heights in the decades to come. In the effervescent aftermath of World War II, the Oppenheimer family's diamond-centric empire continued to evolve and expand. De Beers, already a titan in the industry, began to aggressively branch out injecting its burgeoning profits into the development of gold mines across South Africa. The company's expansionist zeal soon extended to industries as varied as platinum, steel, and even paper products, as the Oppenheimers sought to diversify their interests and solidify their position as one of the most influential business dynasties in Africa. However, the family's tenure was not without its share of controversies, most notably the issue of price fixing. In the 1930s, under the leadership of Ernest Oppenheimer, De Beers had maneuvered itself into a formidable global cartel, a strategy that not only revived the diamond industry, but also set a precedent that lasted well beyond his time. This crafty price manipulation, designed to maintain artificially high prices, drew the attention of legal authorities, leading to a hefty $10 million fine for De Beers in an Ohio court. As the patriarch's reign came to a close, the baton passed to his son, Harry Oppenheimer, who took the helm of both Anglo-American and De Beers. Harry Oppenheimer's tenure was marked by a visionary approach as he sought to revolutionize the diamond industry with ingenious marketing tactics that paved the way for the modern connotation of diamonds as enduring emblems of love and commitment. Under Harry's leadership, De Beers launched its iconic A Diamond is Forever campaign, which transformed the way the world perceived these precious stones. By linking diamonds to the timeless notion of eternal love, the company was able to create an artificial scarcity and sustain sky-high prices, further entrenching the Oppenheimer family's dominance in the global diamond trade. As the 20th century drew to a close, the Oppenheimer legacy continued to evolve, with the family's scion, Nicholas Nicky Oppenheimer, taking on the mantle of leadership. In the dynamic decade of the 1990s, Nicky maintained the family's stronghold over the diamond industry, 
But this reign was not without its challenges. Critics began to accuse the Oppenheimers of monopolistic practices, alleging that their grip over De Beers and its exclusive contracts allowed them to skew the diamond market to their advantage. This growing scrutiny, coupled with heightened public awareness of the ethical and environmental concerns surrounding the diamond trade, began to weigh heavily on the family's public image. In the early 21st century, the Oppenheimers recognized the need to adapt and diversify their business interests beyond the glint of diamonds. They began to venture into various African sectors, including healthcare, agriculture, media, and retail, in a strategic move to safeguard their financial prominence and influence, especially as they gradually stepped back from the diamond sphere. The new millennium brought heightened scrutiny to the Oppenheimer's diamond endeavors, with criticisms centering around environmental and ethical concerns. The Oscar-nominated 2006 film Blood Diamond and Kanye West's 2005 song Diamonds from Sierra Leone were instrumental in elevating public awareness of the moral complexities of the diamond trade, casting a shadow on the practices that had brought the Oppenheimer family to such dizzying heights of wealth and power. In a pivotal move, the Oppenheimer family made the decision in 2012 to relinquish their 40% controlling stake in the iconic De Beers Diamond Company to the Anglo-American Corporation. This transaction marked a significant shift in the global diamond industry's landscape as one of the most powerful and influential dynasties in the sector stepped away from their long-time dominance. However, this was much more than just a routine business deal. For the Oppenheimers, it signaled a strategic pivot, a calculated move to diversify their interests and insulate themselves from the growing public backlash and regulatory scrutiny that had begun to plague the diamond trade. With the newfound liquidity from the sale, the family was able to dramatically expand and diversify their portfolio, venturing into a wide range of sectors beyond the glint of diamonds. They made strategic investments across Africa, targeting industries as varied as fast food, beverage packaging, healthcare, agriculture, media, and retail. By broadening their business interests in this way, the Oppenheimers sought to position themselves at the forefront of the continent's rapidly transforming economic landscape. Rather than remaining beholden to the volatile diamond market, they seized the opportunity to capitalize on the burgeoning consumer markets emerging across Africa. This strategic pivot allowed the Oppenheimer family to shield themselves from the heightened ethical and environmental criticisms that had increasingly tarnished the diamond industry's reputation in recent years. Films like Blood Diamond and Kanye West's Diamonds from Sierra Leone had elevated public awareness of the moral complexities surrounding the sourcing and trade of these precious stones. As the 21st century unfolds, the Oppenheimer legacy continues to evolve, with the family's name still carrying immense weight and influence. But their focus has shifted. While diamonds may have once been the foundation of their wealth and power, the Oppenheimers have successfully diversified their interests to encompass a wide range of vital sectors across Africa. This ability to adapt and reinvent themselves in the face of changing times has been a hallmark of the Oppenheimer dynasty. As they navigate the complex challenges of the 21st century, their continued evolution will undoubtedly shape the economic and social landscape of the African continent for generations to come. Whether viewed as visionary industrialists or symbols of unchecked corporate might, the Oppenheimer family story remains a captivating chapter in the annals of global business history. Their strategic pivot away from diamonds has allowed them to cement their status as one of the most influential and diversified business dynasties on the African continent and beyond. The family's ability to adapt and reinvent themselves in the face of changing times has been a key driver of their enduring success. As the world grapples with pressing issues of sustainability, ethical sourcing, and equitable development, the Oppenheimer family has sought to position themselves as responsible corporate citizens. Leveraging their immense wealth and influence, they have endeavored to drive positive change across the African continent. Whether viewed as titans of industry or symbols of unchecked corporate power, the Oppenheimer legacy remains an intriguing and complex chapter in the annals of global business history. As the 21st century unfolds, the family's continued evolution will undoubtedly shape the economic and social landscape of Africa, with their impact likely to reverberate for generations to come. Yet, at the core of the Oppenheimer story lies a striking example of the rapacious, centuries-long fight over resources, political power, and global prestige.
Their rise to dominance is a testament to the family's ruthless determination to control the most valuable commodities, subjugate local populations, and amass staggering wealth and influence. The Oppenheimer's stranglehold on the diamond industry, built through strategic acquisitions, market manipulation, and the creation of artificial scarcity, is a prime example of this rapacious pursuit of power. For decades, they wielded an almost unbreakable monopoly, dictating prices and supply channels to cement their status as one of the wealthiest families on the planet. But the Oppenheimer legacy extends far beyond the glittering allure of diamonds. Through savvy diversification, the family expanded their business interests into a dizzying array of essential commodities, from mining and finance to agriculture and real estate. This wide-ranging portfolio allowed them to maintain their dominance even as political and economic turmoil swept through South Africa and the broader African continent. The family's strategic maneuverings, political acumen, and sheer financial muscle have enabled them to navigate complex landscapes, accumulating wealth and power at the expense of local communities and the natural environment. Their ability to adapt and reinvent themselves in the face of changing times has been a hallmark of their success but it has also drawn criticism and scrutiny from those who view the Oppenheimer legacy as a symbol of unchecked corporate might. As the 21st century progresses, the Oppenheimer family finds itself at a crossroads. Confronted with heightened global awareness of the ethical and environmental challenges associated with resource extraction and trade, they have sought to rebrand themselves as responsible corporate citizens leveraging their vast resources to drive sustainable development and social progress. Yet, the weight of their past actions and the enormity of their influence continue to loom large. The Oppenheimer story remains a testament to the enduring power of dynasties built on the ruthless pursuit of resources, wealth, and prestige, a narrative that has shaped the economic and social fabric of Africa for generations, and one that will undoubtedly continue to captivate and provoke for years to come. As the 21st century progresses, the Oppenheimer legacy continues to evolve, with the next generation, led by Jonathan Oppenheimer, poised to shape the family's influence in new and emerging markets. The family's ability to adapt, thrive, and maintain their position of power through the most challenging of eras serves as a testament to their strategic prowess and the enduring strength of their familial legacy. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, Please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.